Taiwan, a country I'm proud to say I'm from. In my career as a media entrepreneur, I've spoken to movers and shakers here who make global headlines. But what I'm most excited about are the up and coming forces of my generation. They're young, they're creative, they dare to defy the status quo. Follow me as I meet emerging leaders of Taiwan who lift us, who inspire us, who are changing the world, starting in Taiwan. This is Game Changers with Emily Wiley. Today, we talked to a Taiwanese startup founder whose app has been the number one paid app in the world in productivity in both Apple and Google stores. His name is Marcus. His app, Forest, it helps you stay focused. Now, the more focused you are, the more virtual trees it plants in your phone. The more virtual trees you plant in your phone, the more actual trees Marcus's app actually plants in the world. Forest has now more than 40 million users in the world. 40 million. I just let that sit for a little while. And it's planted more than 1.5 million trees across the world. And they have also partnered with BTS. And for his work, Marcus was named Forbes 30 under 30 in Asia in 2021. So let's meet our game changer today, who's dominating the app world from Taiwan, Marcus B. Hey, so good to have you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. You came up from Taichung? Yeah, from Taichung. I really appreciate it. Wow, 40 million users. That's like more than almost twice the population of Taiwan. Yeah, I myself is really surprised by this. And do you know that among those 40 million users, maybe less than 1% are from Taiwan. So we can probably say we are a global popular app. Totally, just really proud of you guys. Yeah, thank you. So you launched the app in 2014. Um, you are the top paid app in 157 countries yeah. in productivity yeah. on both Apple and Google. Mm -hmm. um, and actually in 2018, right, you won the top Google Play App Award. Yeah, it's the best the app of the year. How did you stumble upon this idea? Because you basically made, you know, it's staying focused into yeah, a game. Yeah. Do you want to know the real answer to this? Always. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I uh, came up with this idea when I was in bathroom pooping. <laughs> yeah, because at that time, uh, my partner and I were actively looking for the new ideas mm. for us to start a new startup project. Because before that, we had been uh, building several game titles, but none of them were successful. Yeah, so we were especially frustrated when we're releasing the third game. It's an iPad game, arcade game, that you okay. can play with your and friend and compete together. And we, we put a lot of effort into the title and we even hired some of our friends for uh, doing the marketing or design. Yeah. But in the end, we earned less than $100 from this one. Oh no, wow. Yeah. So we, we just started to thinking about maybe as students and of about two or three students, Team, it's not a very good idea to start a business from uh, making a game. Right, right. Well, back to a little bit. I think that's really important for a lot of young entrepreneurs to understand that your first yeah. time, you will never get it right the first time. You tried yeah, three yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried three times. And that that just caused my two years of college, <laughs> college time. Oh, that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We back to think of um, what does a game solve? The problem mm. for the users. Okay. Maybe the user will get bored, or they want to have some fun or have some relax. But they could do many other things to do that, right? They could go jogging, right. just sitting with their friends, or play other games. So, we, right, we, we but, don't have that much competitive ad advantage in this field. Right, because for startups, essentially you're solving problems. Because we were students, so yeah. we're looking for problems or pen point as a student point of view. Yeah. Yeah, there might be like uh, how to uh, decide which lunch to eat <laughs> or how right. to hang out with their friends and yeah. how to uh, uh, a campaign or, or something. But uh, eventually we find that how to beat phone addiction and stay mm. focused on studying is a very critical problem for students like this. Was, was that something you were struggling with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Imagine this, if you are sitting in a library yeah. and your phone is next to you, I can assure you after 10 minutes, you will receive a message 
from your friend and you reply to it and boom, your focus hour is just gone. Yeah. 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 So we want to try to um, make an app to simply block the user's phone mm. so that it can to stay focused. Mm -hmm. But actually, this solution does not work. You know why? Well, yeah, how do you break addiction? I mean, addiction to food, um, to swiping on our phones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? So if we just build an app to lock your phone, that's like external restriction. So that's similar to um, asking your mom to keep your phone and hide it. Right. So as a human being, we like to like fight against those restrictions, right? Right. So we will search the house under the pillow in the fridge to find our phones. And right. once we found, found that, we, we are still using it anyway. Right. Yeah, so right. That's or, work. or we replace them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're trying to do is to help the user to form a new habit mm -hmm. and internally understand how to make the balance between focus and relaxation and even the balance with the digital in real life. Okay. Yeah. So what did you figure out? So we find that uh, the concept of gamification might be a very good help in mm -hmm. this case. You know the term gamification? Uh, making something into a game so there's a reward. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Are you a gamer, Emily? Um, I have some apps that I swipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm totally a gamer. <laughs> okay. I'm a kid. And we, we know that when we play games, it's easy to forget about time and just immerse ourselves into it. Right. But when we are doing something serious, seriously, like we have to study or do some report, we we'll easily get bored and lose our attention. Yeah, so what's the magic element behind mm. the gamification mechanism? I think there are two. Mm. The first one is proper challenge. Okay. You can th think, th think that every game will have a series of uh, challenges or puzzles for you to solve, right? Yeah. And the difficulty will not be that tough or that easy. That would be something that motivates you to try it again and again. Yeah. And once you tried it, uh, you will immediately get some feedback from the game. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you will raise a level or get some loot or even uh, you die, but you have to try it again. So we don't have that motivation yeah. ourselves. Yeah. So gamification is something try to split or break it down, break the long-term goal into some short-term steps and you yeah. can challenge that. And gradually you will ingrain an inner habit and motivation to do that on yeah. your own. I'm smiling because it, it all of a sudden makes staying focused sound so fun. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's a really, I mean, tiring task to say, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to stay focused. Yeah, who, who wants to stay focused right. <laughs> if we can sleep or play games, right? <laughs> right. So that is basically the concept behind Forest, or app. And if you stay focused in the app, the app would plant a tree. And if you browse other apps or do something that is distracting you, the tree would die. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, so, and every tree you planted will be collected as your focus forest. So you can visualize and motivate you more to stay focused longer. Well, so it's been eight years and 40 million users later. What have you noticed about, um, as humans, as users, as internet users of the world, mobile users, how have the way we focus changed over the years? Um. Like, like, for example, is there, um, do holidays matter? Or is there a particular time of day that we stay focused more than another? It's interesting to uh, notice that uses from Western or Asian country yeah. are different in case of uh, how, to, how they stay focused. Oh, I'm curious. Yeah, so for example, uh, many uh, users from Asian country like China, mm -hmm. they spend much more longer time to focus in our app like about 25% more. And you can see that almost all the users in China, they use the app for study. Because you can know that uh, students here are uh, under much more pressure. They have to have better grades or to, to, to compete with their peers. Yeah. So when we try to use the same concept to promote and marketing our app in uh, Europe or America, we found that's a problem because right. people there, when, when we are interviewing them, people there say, who, who, who will record or keep their focused time using the app? 
that's very nerdy. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Yeah. So, so what do you tell them instead? So, 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 so the users there use force simply for like uh, when they are doing other other stuff like meditation or go jogging, workout, or even um, talking with their friends, hang out with their friends. Yeah. So the behavior is much different between those kind of two users. What's been the most surprising that people have responded that, you know, I use this app to stay focused on blank. I come up with an interesting story. Mm -hmm. It's about a user uh, feedback to us and say, your app is so great, but I want to focus for eight hours. Why? Because they want to use the app for sleep. <laughs> because uh, between or after or before a sleep, we usually use our phones for no reason, right? Right. And that will affect our sleep uh, result or our uh, health. So according to this feedback, we eventually built a new app called Sleep Town to help them solve that sleep problem. Oh, that's great. I love that. Yeah. So now there's a the separate app. I can log how much I sleep. And the more I sleep, is it also planting trees? The more I sleep, no, the more... No, not planting trees. Okay. You can use that app to building house. <laughs> Yeah, whenever you want to go to sleep, you can build a house. And during that time, if you use your phone, the house will collapse. And also we have to, um, like, setting the regular sleep cycle. Uh -huh. Like, go to bed at 12 and wake up at, at 7. So you can ha have a better, healthier sleep habit. Oh, this is so much fun. Let's take a break. Okay. And uh, when we come back, I want to ask you about the real life changes you're making because whether it's plant, uh, building a house, you're actually planting trees in real life. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's take a break. We've been talking to Marcus, um, whose app helps us stay focused. Welcome back to Game Changers. This is where I talk to really interesting people, young people in Taiwan who are doing very cool things. Marcus here has the world's number one app in productivity. His app, Forest, helps us stay involved by planting trees. Um, what about COVID? I mean, we talked a little bit about um, the different behaviors across the world and how people stay focused and why. Um, how did COVID impact this? Uh, we can see that people are using our app more, more than uh, about 20% more focus time in the app. That's a lot. That's a 20% is a lot of productivity. I think the pandemic is just like a magnifier that emphasizes the ability of a person who can uh, manage or discipline themselves to stay more focused on what's more important in life. And in the future, I think that would be a very uh, big difference between those who can and those who can't. Well, but there's also something else your app does, which is really cool. You're, you're planting real trees. Real trees. Yeah, yeah. 1.5 million real trees now. Yeah, we, we have been planting over 1.5 million trees in Africa. And uh, the story behind this is like, uh, after using the app for a while, mm -hmm. a user might be uh, might lose their interest in planting those virtual trees. Right. Yeah. So we have been adding more content like new tree species, uh, background music. New tree singing. species? How many tree species do you have? I think there are maybe eighty. <laughs> That's yeah. So much fun. But one day we just come up with this idea: What if we mm -hmm. can actually plant a real tree on Earth for the users? Yeah. That sounds, sounds difficult for us to do, but later we found that there are some uh, nonprofit organizations that could do that for, for us. So we partnered with Trees for the Future, an uh, MPO uh, in America, okay. and they have several programs in uh, African countries. So the mechanism is very simple. Uh -huh. If you stay focused in your app, uh -huh. you can earn some virtual coins, uh -huh. and with that, uh, with, with those virtual coins, you can redeem a real tree planted on your behalf. And what we do is wow. we will donate part of our revenue and profit yeah. to Trees for Future, and they will do the right thing for us. And I think what's more interesting is that they don't just plant a seed into the dirt. Mm. Actually, they have a program called Forest Garden, uh -huh. and that will be held in several African countries. And the local farmer and families will join this program to turn their empty land into a sustainable farm so that they can produce more uh, economic uh, plants for more income and also some food for their families. Oh, I love that. So yeah. by staying focused on your app, we're helping to grow real trees mm -hmm. and help families. Yeah. 
So we are very proud of this integration uh, of gamification mechanism and charity program. Yeah. Because for yeah. the users, they will get more motivation to use the app. And for the charity organization, they may have more awareness from those users uh, around the world. That's incredible. Did you know, did you always know that your apps would change the world? I mean, because you started this um, with your classmates when you were in college. And being engineering students, making apps, it's very fun. And everybody wants to be world number one. Yeah. But did you know that you would be changing the world through your apps? I think during the past eight years, the mindset of starting a startup and our vision has been changing a lot. Yeah, just for example, at the beginning, we just want to make some uh, simple app that yeah. can solve yeah. <laughs> and that can be used by uh, uh, users over the world. And, and later, we, we found that we can do much more things than just ourselves. So we build this company and we uh, hire or invite many new talents with us to build a product studio so that we can make a lot of products just like Sleep Town, Water Do. Mm -hmm. And also recently, um, I'd like to do something further to make the company or the product studio uh, even bigger so that they can solve a real world problem and solve it very well. So Yeah, so what's next for you? So mm -hmm. I think the next step is to help user to uh, figure out two things. Mm -hmm. The first is what to focus on. And the second is how to focus better. What to focus on and how to focus better. Okay. Yeah. So for the what to focus on yeah. part, we all know that we, we don't fo focus just for its own sake, right? We will have uh, future goals or something we want to do, we want to achieve. So keeping that goal in mind and even breaking it down into small chunks of milestones uh -huh. can really help when achieving the goal. Uh -huh. So maybe in the future, our app could help uh, users to track and like manage their goals and break it down uh -huh. into small tasks okay. and even schedule those tasks into some upcoming plans. And I think that will really help those users to um, stay on track and also do more and deliver more value during the focus session. So this is like, like a workout app um, that helps you set further goals so you work harder and do different workouts next time, but it's for, uh, body, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah, for yeah. focus. I think okay. focus is the ultimate, <laughs> like, like, ultimate um, way to um, deliver value as a student or as a knowledge worker. So that's what to focus on. Uh -huh. um, but then the other part is I need to figure out how to focus better. Yeah. So uh, we all know that uh, if we want to do a job better, we have to sharp sharpen our tools first, right? So the tools we need here is how, to, how do you improve your attention? So uh, in the future, our app could help the users before, during, and after each focus session to uh, have a better outcome. Oh. For example, before a focus session, uh, we can uh, ask the users to write down what they are uh, going to do in the next 30 minutes mm -hmm. and even have some ritual like have a cup of coffee mm -hmm. or a deep breath mm -hmm. and during the focus session we can uh, create a better focus environment for them like use some uh, white noises or dragon music or uh, block other apps and after each focus session they can even evaluate their focus performance and those statistics could be uh, help them to improve their focus habit or focus ability better. Wow, it sounds like there's a lot of work still yeah, you yeah. need to do. So that's the new clear vision. And with that clear vision, we want to encourage and empower every user to focus on reaching their goals and their full potential. I think that's the best kind of job where you are <laughs> satisfying your own need of engineering, making yeah, a fun yeah, yeah. app but you're helping people to achieve their goals. Yeah. And then at the same time, helping the world. Mm -hmm. You're planting more trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business for you. Yeah. Um, but kind of helping to change the world is like a byproduct of your business. Everybody wins. That's exactly our core belief. That's amazing. I love that. So thank you so much for talking to us today. 
I think it's really quite rare to be able to hear from somebody、um, behind the number one app how you made the app, why you make it, and kind of how you approach focus,、um, because it is something that I know myself I need to get a little bit better at, and that how because of this product that you created, you're. Making yourself happy, you're making us better people, better better workers, and also making the world a better place. Everybody wins. It's so cool. But last question before we let you go to go back to Taichung <laughs> is a question that we ask everybody. Out of your accomplishments so far, how much was given to you versus how much did you have to fight for? I think for、uh, the past few years,、uh, most of the accomplishment. Maybe come from pure luck. <laughs> that that's not、uh, I'm humble or something.、Mm. But I, I think that's the story. Like I found a gold mine in my backyard, and yeah, what we do, what we we did well, and we have a wonderful product that people around the world are using it. So what we should do now is to leverage on、uh, the past experience, the past accomplishment, and stand on. Uh, what we have today to take the company further, and so bigger and critical and more problem for the world. So I think with our lovely and powerful team, we can step by step、uh, improve the company and improve what we do and create more and more product to fulfill our dreams and also make the world a better place. I think you're super humble. I think that you don't get to be four, Forbes 30 under 30 by luck. Or that the world's number one app by luck.、Um, it sounds like there's a lot of hard work that went into it.、Um, having a really good team, being able, being able to pick and choose your really good team. But I, I love that you said luck because I, you know, just being in Taipei, being a, a part of the startup community, the startup world is incredibly supportive.、Mm-hmm. Um, right? Everybody says you have a good idea, go ahead and do it, give it a try, and fail. And by the fourth time, you're going to be like Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for tuning in. We've been speaking to Marcus about how he's changing the world by making us all more focused, more productive, and planting trees around the world. Super cool. World's number one. <laughs> I love this. And from Taiwan. Cool. So, if you're a game changer, also in your country, whether you're planting trees, making a productivity app, in the number one app in the world, please get in touch with this game changer. And as always, my name is Emily Wai Wu. You can find me on all socials. You've been watching Taiwan Plus. Stick around for more programs from Taiwan Plus. Follow and subscribe. See you next time. <laughs>